aliens with the principle of creation. God could not will that happiness dependent on what you could never have. The fact that God is love does not require belief, but it does require acceptance. It is indeed possible for you to deny facts, although it is impossible for you to change them. If you hold your hands over your eyes, you will not see because you are, are interfering with the laws of seeing. If you deny love, you will not know it because your cooperation is the law of its being. You cannot change laws you did not make, and the laws of happiness were created for you, not by you. Hmm. So what do y'all think about that? Anybody yeah. want to? For the will of God is for us to be happy, but we cannot do it through our ego. Like you were saying, it has to be done through our spirit. Well, we can, we can, the beautiful thing is we have free will. We have free will whether we choose a loving, experience and lesson or whether we choose a fearful experience or lesson. We have complete and total free will. It's completely okay. I'm here to tell you, this is not about evaluating anybody's decision. Okay. You know, because some of the decisions that, that, uh, that come from the ego can be some very colorful decisions and can make up some very interesting stories. You know, some very interesting stories. So, you know, I'm not here, we're not here to evaluate um, a, 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 colorful, a colorful story. I mean, you know, that's, that's interesting. I mean, you know, so it's like you'll have, you know, bottom line is everyone goes home in the end, all paths lead to God, you know? So that's really the whole deal. So it really doesn't matter if, you know, if it's out of love or out of fear, to be honest with you, uh, love is the path of least resistance. Love is like, if you want to go to California, love is like jumping on I-10 and heading west if you have to park by car, you know, um, or better yet, jumping on a plane and heading west or, or just flying west, whereas a more colorful path would be to, you know, fly to, you know, New Zealand, go, you know, go uh, east and, and make your way around the world and stuff like that. It's, you know, it's, you know, more, more of a story, you know, it's colorful. It's more, in, it's interesting, you know, so, but either way, you know, all experiences have, the, have, have potentiality for learning and all learning leads to God. So it really, it really doesn't matter. You know, it really doesn't matter. Does anyone else have any, uh, you know, any other part of this part? Because there's, there's a lot of meat here on this paragraph. Debbie, Ed, did you have any areas that you guys wanted to kind of expound on or what speaks to you? I love the part that it says, the fact that God is love does not require belief. Mm, me too. It does not require belief, but it does require acceptance. Mm -hmm. That in itself is just beautiful. Just accept it for what it is. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yeah, it is. It brings a lot of peace if we can just see that all that God is, is love. And that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, that's a wonderful feeling that despite what you judge of yourself as far as any quote unquote imperfections and things like that, that, that God is love and love is completely unconditional and it's not based on anything that you do here. God loves you infinitely in spite of what you may think are your shortcomings. And I say in spite of what you may think are your shortcomings, because a lot of times we may think certain things are shortcomings, but those things that are within us are, there are things that want to be, that want to be birthed into another area where, 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 
where we can have an opportunity to, to express spirit, you know? And it, right now, it just seems like a shortcoming, per se. Like, um, it's just not fully developed yet. But there's something within you, okay? That was, it's part of you. And it, it's just not fully developed yet. So it seems like a shortcoming, okay? But once it's actually more developed, and you get more in line with your true nature, your divine nature, then that same thing that was perceived at one point in time, in temporal time, to be a shortcoming now becomes an asset. It now becomes, you know, it now becomes a strength, you know? So, yeah. What do y'all think? Wonderful thing, is it? We've got that background. We are not in this. That's wonderful. We're not in this alone. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. And see, that's the wonderful part about A Course in Miracles and Study Groups is because we all read the, read the paragraph, but we have all of these unique perspectives that we share, and then we all are increased by these unique perceptions. Um, everyone's perception, everyone's perspective is important because we all grow as a group. Anybody else? Ed, you're kind of quiet. You're not normally quiet, brother. What's going on? <laughs> Ed, you know what you're doing, man? You want me to unmute you? Do I need to unmute you? You're talking, but we can't hear you. Hold on one second. I'm gonna unmute Ed, because sometimes Ed kind of struggles with technology. So hold on one sec. I got your back. Debbie, you can hear me, right? Okay. All right, hold on. All right, Ed, I can, can you say something now? Can you hear me now? I sure yes. can. I, see, I, see I, I, I muted you. Uh, because you, there was a, a lot of background noise coming when uh, Debbie was talking, but yeah, I just unmuted you. Sorry. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> I have the dog duty since he's working oh. late. Oh, okay, okay. Um, but I, I did want to pose a question. Okay. Says. Um, the fact that God is love does not require belief, but it does require acceptance. So what would be the difference between the two? I think yeah. acceptance is when you are like on a, a level of taking it in, Finding it to fit well within your uh, belief system. And then when you actually believe it, that's when I think you start putting more things into practice. Uh, let's see, let me reread that again. Well, I think you become more operational more active when, when it is a belief. And acceptance to me would just be like, kind of like the first few steps toward belief. I, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me on that. What do you think, Ed? Yeah, Ed, you, you brought it up. Let's hear it. You kind of garbled, I couldn't hear everything. Okay, can you hear us now? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I can hear you. I mean, you're like sitting right on the speaker, um, but I couldn't hear the last part of. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear the last part of what was being said. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, to accept that God is love is a a a state of working at it little by little and bringing it into what you understand. Whereas if you believe God is love, then that is 
requires more commitment of you so that you actually start operation, operating under that belief that God is love. Maybe acceptance is when you are in the stages of bringing it in and changing yourself. And then a belief in God is when you begin branching out and helping others to believe that God is love. I don't know. What do you think, Ed? I, I, well, it, it seems that would be on a more fundamental level and and not just limited to well it, it speaks of beliefs and acceptance it's what we're being asked to do is to accept something that we may not believe or doubt so uh, in which we come across all the time so how do you reconcile believing something that you don't accept well, can you hear me, Ed? I can hear you. Okay, because um, I turned the speaker, you know, towards uh, uh, Jean so that you can hear a little bit better. Um, and I project my voice, so I don't have a problem with that. Um, that's a good question, Ed. Um, number one, I don't believe that uh, love, love does not require your belief in anything. Um, it still it continues to exist, whereas fear does require your belief in order to exist. If you don't believe in fear, it doesn't exist. If, in order for it to continue to exist, it requires your belief. Because fear, 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 fear is not real. But love, whether you believe it or not, it will continue to exist. Whether you, whether you believe that, whether you don't believe in it, um, it, it still exists. I, 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 knew, I know that part. Um, so it, that my belief is not required for love, you know, for the fact that God is love. Um, but it does require my acceptance. I mean, you know, as far as my acceptance, um, well, I'm, well, I'm love too, you know? And, 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 and if I don't accept that, then I'm not accepting a part of myself. But do you think that with acceptance, there is not necessarily commitment, but with belief, there would be commitment. I believe that there's commitment with anything that you believe in because you're committing, you're saying that I believe this. And so there's something that you are, yeah, you're definitely committing something when you believe anything, you know, and once you once you believe something, then you put yourself into the, the uh, you invest or in, in the thought paradigm of that belief. So it becomes real to you once you believe in it. I mean, if you believe it, it becomes real to you. Um, you know, so do you, I- Do you think that belief is a stronger form involving more than accepting? I think that, uh, we're just talking about me now, as far as my what I believe. Um, I believe that anything that we believe in, it will be real to us, whether that thing is real or not. Okay. Um, I believe that regardless of whether something is, if we believe it is, we will experience the illusion or reality over it'll be our reality. Okay. <laughs> That's what, that's, that's what I believe. Um, you know, for example, you know, let's just say, for example, I'm just giving an example. Now. Um, everybody's in a, everybody's in, 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 we're in Course in Miracles, all right? And, and um, let's say, we're, we're just, like, just like now, and one of us gets up and leaves out, the, and leaves out. Okay. It doesn't say anything to anybody, and just leaves. Okay, and then because, you know, we get into the story, we begin to attempt to rationalize what happened. And so what happened? Uh, maybe this person's upset. Well, they're probably upset or something like that. And so we begin to invest into that illusion of this person. The only thing that factually happened was this person got up and left the room. That was it. Well, they may not be upset or anything like that. Now, I'm just only using an example here. Because this is just like one sentence, and you know, uh, 
it asked the question, so you know we're all attempting to answer. <laughs> can I? Can I, I love share something real quick. Absolutely. Okay, so the next paragraph says the next sentence right after that says it is indeed possible for you to deny facts although it is impossible for you to change them so does the course in miracle say as a fact that god is love does it yeah. say that yes. okay yes. so that's a fact you don't have to believe it and your belief can be skewered because you can look at the world that you're living in and you can question whether or not God is love based on some of the things that we see, you know, suffering, hatred, division. Those things can make you question whether or not God is love. So you might not believe, but the fact remains that God is love. So you can accept it despite the belief of what you might be seeing that contradicts that. But the fact remains based on what the, you know, A Course in Miracles says that God, God is love. Whether or not you want to believe that, that's a fact and you can't change that. So it basically, if you know you can't change that fact, then accept it. That, that's just what I'm picking up from this particular paragraph. I could be wrong, but you know, that's the difference. Your belief can probably change based on what you're seeing, whether or not God is love, but the fact remains that God is love. I like what, I like, I like what you're saying, Debbie. Thank, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Did, uh, Ed, yeah. Does, I'm sorry, Ed, does that, uh, does that help you in any, or did you have something else you want to add to that, or? Well, yeah, I mean, the fact that we walk a line between the two of them, belief and acceptance, leaving us, I mean, because we're confronted with that all the time, that um, we don't, if we don't believe something, we can't accept it. Um, and in this case, I think what we're looking at is that neither is really required. All that's required is a willingness. If there's a willingness, then there's the opportunity for acceptance. And if there's a willingness, then belief can go beyond belief to knowledge. But as long as we don't, we're still in this phase of belief rather than knowledge, we're always going to be challenged with belief and acceptance. It's going to keep going back and forth. So we have to be open and willing. Okay. I'm willing to accept that too. I mean, you know, I, I, like, I like everybody's explanation here, Ed. So I, I, I like your, your, your spin on it, and I like Debbie's spin on it, too. Cool. I, it, it, I'll it be goes, right back. It goes into it more. Actually, if you go into another, into another sentence, it actually talks about, uh, you know, if you hold your hands over your eyes, which kind of is in line with what Debbie was saying, you will not see because you're, you're, just into, you're merely interfering with the laws of seeing, but that doesn't mean that it's not there. Um, and it's saying that if you, do, if you deny love, you will not know it because your cooperation is the law of its being. So you still have to, you know, you st it still requires your cooperation in order to know it. it and a just, lot of faith. Which is, kind of, which is kind of what you're saying to it. So I, you know, I mean, if you continue to well, read it. Well, willingness, willingness um, along with faith um, I think equals the acceptance and cooperation willingness and, and cooperation are synonymous too yeah yeah so I think we're all saying the same thing from a you know like a, just different ways I think we're all saying the same thing did somebody else join us? Hold on. Let me see something. It looks like somebody there. Yeah. Okay. CK. Oh, I know who that is. It, it's Krista. It's Krista. Hey, Krista. How you doing? Hey, everybody. How's it going? All right. Hi. Doing good. Let me let me see if I can put put us put it, put everybody in a different view so I can see everybody. Hold on one second. I like to be able to see everybody. 
There we go. There we go. That's better. I can see everybody now. All right. You know, makes you know, I like I like to have a feeling that everybody's around. You know, I can see everybody. So this is cool. All right. Okay. All right. So does does anybody want to talk about eleven anymore or? Do we feel comfortable moving on? Moving on. I'm looking over at Ed and Debbie, and Ed looks like he's still reading. He might have a question. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Debbie, are you good? OK, all right. Krista, any, 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 uh, I don't know how long you've been here because I was in a different view. I didn't really see you come on. So did they, no, no, know? no, I'm fine. I'm just following along. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. So we're going to move on to 12. Jean, would you mind speaking a little louder? All right. Any attempt to deny what is must be fearful. And if the attempt is strong, it will induce panic. Willing against reality, though impossible, can be made into a very persistent goal, even though you do not want it. But consider the result of this strange decision. You are devoting your mind to what you do not want. How real can this devotion be? If you do not want it, it was never created. If it were never created, it is nothing. Can you really devote yourself to nothing? Hmm. Okay. All right. Let's see. So I guess it hinges on denying what is makes you fearful. And it's, it turns out to be not a real thing, even though you expend a lot of energy in it. I, I want just to, to keep the confusion down. When it's talking about what you do want and what you don't want, okay, don't think, don't think that it's referring to personality because this book doesn't know your personality. Okay, so in the, for just 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 for confusion state, sake, okay, so you you're not confused. It is not talking about anything having to do with Stephen Fleming, uh, or, or 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 Pam, or, or Jean, or Robert, or Ed, or Krista, or Debbie. Okay, it's talking about our higher nature. It's talking about our Christ self. That's what it's talking about. What we want and what we don't want. It's talking about our right mind. Okay. So you have to look at it from the standpoint that it's referring to our right mind and then read it, okay? So where it's saying any attempt to deny what is must be fearful if the attempt is strong, well, well the next step, willing against reality, though impossible, can be made into a very persistent goal even though you do not want it, okay? It's not talking about the personality. It is basically, it's basically letting you know that ultimately you do not want it. Ultimately, you don't want illusions of fear and things like that. Ultimately, you want to be happy. Okay? So it's, 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 it's an appeal to your right mind. You are devoting your mind to what you do not want. So again, it's referring to your right mind. And it's saying, ultimately, this is not going to make you happy. It may bring fleeting happiness, but you do not want it. Thank you. 
Yeah, yeah I, I see what you're talking about, Ed. Yeah, let me mute that. Yeah. Okay. All right, so does anybody uh, want to talk about it or anything like that? Anybody want to talk about any of the sentences that come out that uh, speak to them or? Don't you all think that we do oftentimes will against reality, even though it's impossible? And the result, of course, is that we Find, we find fear out of that and frustration. Yeah, we were, we were talking about that last uh, time in Course in Miracles. We're talking about how when we say, no, I want that. That's what I want. I want that right there. Right. I, 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 don't, I don't, you know, whatever Holy Spirit's talking about, I, that's what I want right there. You know, don't tell me what I want. I want that. But ultimately, that's not what I want because later on, when I find out all of the lessons that come with that and all the all the pain and suffering and things like that that come with that you know that everything else that comes with that and then later on like you know something i really didn't want that i, really, <laughs> I didn't i didn't add, i didn't want all of that you know i i thought i wanted that but you know something that now that i'm experiencing that i don't want that okay so everybody knows what i'm talking about okay everybody knows what i'm talking about. You can apply that to all sorts of things. Yeah. But initially, I want that. And usually those desires come from a perception of lack. Feeling that that will make you somehow more of what you're perceiving there is a lack of. So in that moment, you're operating in the realm of the ego. Right. As opposed to operating in the realm of the spirit exactly. and true reality. Exactly. Exactly. So this is all a continuation of what we were expounding on right. last week. It's just right. giving it to you in a different way different flavor. Each paragraph is like a different flavor. They put a little salt and pepper on it. Okay, let's put a little of this on it now. Let's put some of that on it. But it's still the same, it's still the same thing. You know, ultimately, this is not what you want. Now, if you have to go through this journey of, of, of experience and experience everything that comes with that, just to come to that realization when, where it's trying to tell you that that's not what you want, but no, I got to find out for myself, Holy Spirit. I don't want to hear what you, I don't want to take your word for it. I'm going to find out for myself. I want that. Don't tell me what I want. <laughs> How you gonna tell me what I want? I know what I want. You know? And me, I'm trying to determine what I want. I'm trying to ask the Holy Spirit. He hasn't told me outright. <laughs> but that's wonderful because you know what that means? That means you're in the question. Absolutely. Yeah. You're in the yeah. question. And there's going to be so many wonderful things that are going to be coming your way while you're in the question. This is a very exciting time. Yeah, for you. yeah. I believe so. Yeah. I really I got rid of everything, stripped everything, because I feel like I want to just listen to listen to guidance. You want to be open. It, it, it open. So yeah. wow. Yeah, you are on a mission. Yeah, yeah. So you are demonstrating your willingness. Oh, oh I definitely am, mm -hmm. but not, it's not easy at times, but yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is exciting when I pick them up. Yes, yeah. it is. Yeah. I'm excited to, you know, and it's not even my journey. You know? yeah. I'm excited just, you know, just, just for you. I'm just excited, you know? I'm like, man, that sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, that's a little bit of a tangent, but. It all kind of blends. Yes, it does. Yes. You know, when you're talking about what you want and, and uh, all that stuff. Like, meaning I'm really trying to not live on my ego, trying to figure out what yes. spirit wants, you know? Mm -hmm. And we're habitual creatures. So mm -hmm. keep in mind, you know, just as far as uh, in neuroscience, right now what we're doing as we're you know, reading and learning and understand and getting and experiencing a change of perception, we're really rewiring 
our brains through neuroplasticity. So the old thought patterns, um, as they are used less and less, they begin to dissolve and dissolve and go away. As you are developing these new thought patterns, then you will be able to, so you still have the habit of wanting, for example, the, you know, what you really don't want, but you're able to catch it more now because you have new wiring that's actually being, being, you know, created in your brain. The human brain is a, a, a marvelous thing. But, you know, and so you're actually creating the wiring to help to support those thought patterns, those, 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 those uh, thought patterns of, of, of what you really do want. So. What coincides with God's will. Right, that, which is what you really want. Because yes. keep in mind, because keep in mind, your will and God's will are one because God right. is within you. God is within you. There is no separation of God from you, God is in you. God is not outside of you, right? So that means that God's will is your will. You, you might your right you mind's will. will. Yes. <laughs> your right mind's will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When you're coming from the ego mind, well, like, you know, then you got a split mind now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, you know, now you got a split mind. You know, I want that. Even though your right mind is actually saying, well, you really don't want that. Don't tell me what I want, right mind. Don't tell me. I'd say, I want that. You know? Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, okay. can we move on? Debbie, you good? All right, okay. Ed, you got something to say, man? You good? You're paused there. You're, you're muted there because the door were dogs. So I'm I'm unmuting you now. <laughs> you, you need you need to look around more often. <laughs> okay. Anything? Okay. All right. I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Going against reality, though impossible, can be made into a very persistent goal, even though you do not want it. You are, devo uh, you are devoting your mind to what you do not want. So what you do not want, let's call it what it is. It's an illusion. Mm -hmm. It is. And Yeah. So... Um, and, and which comes down to the last line. Can you really devote yourself to nothing, which is an illusion? Exactly. You know, and, and, and you're right, Ed. I mean, keep, keep going, brother. I'm, 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 I'm with you. Keep, what, what, what do you, you want to well, say? Here's the problem. Okay. Here's the problem. We, we are so powerful, so powerful that in the creation of our illusions, it seems real. So we invest in it, which we really are investing in nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on. I'm listening. I'm with you. Come on. <laughs> but the underlying point so, is you. So the, 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 it comes down to being able to recognize the difference between what is real and what is not real. But, it, what, but first what must come is realizing how powerful we, we are, that we can make or create something that actually, as far as all of our five consensus are concerned, are real. Absolutely, Ed, 100%, man. I mean, we, can, we can create uh, well, first of all, fear is not real. And again, like we were talking about, fear requires your belief to, to, to actually exist. You know, fear will only exist as long as there are those of us that believe in it. It will only exist as long as there are those of us that believe in it. It is something that, that's how powerful we are. It is something that does exist, Ed, but it is because of those that are investing in its thought paradigm. Okay, 
You're absolutely correct. And it could be something else we believe in and it will exist as long as we continue to believe. I don't have to just talk about fear. You know, I mean, any type of illusion, Ed, you're right. Well, fear is in all illusions. And, and, and as soon as you think that you may have overcome it, it just escapes and forms another illusion. But we must be aware of it. And if it's desirable, um, of course, if it's not, we can tell that instantly if we are not at peace. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how do we get peace then? Ed? Let's 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 bring them home. You know, how do we get how do we experience that peace? Let's 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 bring everybody home with that. Come on, because you, you you know, come on, come on with it. <laughs> how do you experience that peace? Yeah. Well, very simple. If we are not experiencing peace, then we have to step back and decide again. I, I think I, I missed the last part that you said. We have, we have to step back and do what, Ed? Decide again. Okay. Choose again. Choose Make again. Make another choice. Okay. All right. Right. And keep choosing until you feel some peace. Yeah. And you know, I, I'm 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 right there with you. And, and like I said, you know, the beautiful part is the beautiful part is even if you choose a fearful path, it's okay. It's something to learn from. Like, right. It's it's nothing to beat yourself up over. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. You know. Right. There's a reason why that's happening too. Yes. Yeah. Because it makes you, they want to show you this in life. Yeah. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. When, when I first started reading The Course in Miracles, I didn't totally get that because it was like I was learning like all the things about the Course. And so I, I was quick to point out error and stuff. I was like, this person's thinking erroneous. Da, 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 da. You know, when I first started reading The Course in Miracles, and over time, you, you, you know, so what? You know? It is what it is. The bottom line is we all go home anyway, you know? So it doesn't matter, you know? I mean, it's, it's not on me to evaluate somebody else's journey and I do them a disservice anyway because their journey is meant for them, okay? And it's, it's not on someone else, someone else to evaluate me on my journey. It's not. It does both of us a disservice. You're not even meant, the, the journey's not meant to make sense to you. If you see somebody that, for example, is you know, doesn't have a home or something like that or whatever, you just, you know, you're not, you don't have to understand what brought them to the point where they don't, where they, where they don't have a home or something. You can experience compassion, you know, and that's okay. But at the same time, um, it's not on you to point the finger as far as what they did to get to where they are or anything, any of those things. You know, and these are things that I didn't understand a long time. I did. I didn't understand it. You know, and so the bottom line is no one's journey is going to make sense to you but your own. Your journey is the only one that's going to really make 100% total sense. You know, you can't see someone else's journey from the perspective of your own eyes. You can't. You can't understand it. Is you can't understand it. You can even live together. Even if you live together and there's a lot of similarities and stuff like that, there's still something else about this person that you're not going to completely understand. So just give it up. And, 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 and so, see, that's kind of where suffering comes when you don't want to give it up. You know what I mean? So it's like all suffering comes from the non-acceptance, which is kind of what this talking about as well, of what is, okay? Because you want to have things the way you want them to be. Well, this is what this is what makes sense to me. That doesn't, what he's doing doesn't make sense to me. Or this doesn't make sense. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It doesn't have to make any sense to you. And if you can accept that, then you can actually have some peace. But if you, if it has to make sense to you, 
where is the acceptance of, 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 of where is the acceptance there? Because it has to make sense through your eyes. There's no peace. So a lot of peace comes from the relinquishment of our own self-interest and, 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 and self-serving desires and, 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 and the way we want things to be. If you can just relinquish it and just accept what is, there's a lot of peace that comes with it. In our thoughts about it. Right. Yeah. All of that. It's, it's all together. Because your thoughts di dictate what you see. You know? Absolutely. So we're going to take a break. We're going to take about an eight to ten minute break and get some water and some refreshments and, uh, and some fruit. And I have some cookies. I hid them from my nephew. I'm going to go get them. You know, he's going to eat them up. So I hid them up in my pocket. So we'll be back. 16 years old. Yes. Now, now I was a teenager. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Online people, what are they doing? Wow, we uh, have a question. Yeah, okay. Go get it. Get yourself a drink, something. Yeah, I've never seen one of them sitting there eating that. I know. Turkey drumstick. <laughs> uh, self service will be able to. Oh, yes, yes. Some food. Oh, uh, I just. Looks like Clayton has yeah. some forks. All right, so I hear these, these from my nephew. These are some of my best pieces from all of these. Should we place this pay? I have a house with a bedroom. Well, I'll take your number, but I'm not that very nice. See how it works out. How long are you going to be here in Houston? Well, I believe only a couple days, but I'm not, not sure. I'm literally kind of going day by day by day. It makes my mother crazy. <laughs> yeah. So when did you get the idea to just take off, take off and uh, you know, just hit the road? Well, slowly been the last the last couple of years to think about it seriously mm -hmm. as works as works and get more insane. Okay. And well, and I started meditating. My mind's been kind of opening, kind of expanding to different. I, I just started feeling like this is not like I started resenting everything I was doing. I was making so much money to do not like I realized I, I also learned that I have like other walls to, to tear down because I put myself in a, in a shell. And, Whatever, so that's why I'm um, in this whole thing. So, but and I also had two cats, and I, and I said to people at work, when my cats are gone, I'm gone. And my last cat died six months ago. Oh. So, yeah, thanks. So, that's. Didn't have to be a caretaker anymore. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Robert, yep. can you help me? <laughs> sure. This one is really tight. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is how we do it every week. Yeah. It was tight, wasn't it? Yes, it was. All right. Thank you. Know. Thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm not, <laughs> all these are so good as far as prices. You know, so I, I, I get it like, you know, everything that you see up there from all of these. Oh. You know? He, he knows how to find a bar bargain. Yeah. All yeah. this is a good place, isn't yeah, it? It sure is. It yeah. sure is. It definitely is. Oh, the yeah. prices are definitely the best. And and their produce is fresh. Mm -hmm. And I think their meat prices, like, they'll get lamb. You never see lamb on Down here in Texas, we like to put those spicy stuff on them. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's influence it's, it's fam. It's influence fam from, from the Hispanic, large Hispanic community that we have. So we put some of this stuff on our food and stuff. Believe it or not, Pam, it's okay. It tastes yeah. good. Yeah, it tastes pretty good. It sparks the interest of them. It's ah. not. You, yeah. put, you put that on the fruit? Yeah, put it on the fruit. Yep, yeah, sure do. I think I'm going to try one. Yeah, you're you're, you're in Texas now. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Did you get out the rattlesnake? Hmm? Did you get out the rattlesnake? The rattlesnake. Well, Ben hasn't tried it. Hmm? Ben has not tried the rattlesnake. Don't you have some in your fridge? Oh, I, oh, <laughs> I think I'm fine. <laughs> I was wondering what you're talking about. I like rattlesnake. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to scam me. It doesn't take mm. much. Mm. <laughs> you said mm. you were saying we're here in Texas. Mm -hmm. mm. So have you had any unusual experiences out there on the road? I've had so many. I mean, that's all something. Right. I'm journaling too, so. Good. Mm. Yeah, I'm thinking about whether I should write a book on my on my uh, on my awakening. That's a good word for well, you. Mm -hmm. I was wondering, you know, word for it. We just yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be great. Well, in not in in not from a thing to talk about, about myself, but to shape. <coughs> to share, to help other people realize that there's so many, <coughs> wow, that, that stuff is, uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. no, I think I hotly inhaled a little bit of it. I think it is kind of tasty though. Mm -hmm. had it on mm -hmm. Except wow. on you and I. <laughs> well, other well, people surely go. This is the last December. Well, Steve and I took a trip to Denver, road trip, and uh, where were we, Steve, when we picked up those two hitchhikers? I remember, forget where we were, about, about halfway. Two, 300 miles out of Denver? Yeah, about 400 miles, yeah, about three, 400, two, 300, oh, for about 400. I've been driving most of the night, it's about five in the morning, I said, look, I'm going to stop at the next gas station. You can drive. Mm -hmm. I remember passing this car that was an old Cadillac was on the side of the road mm -hmm. several miles back. Pulling to this gas station. We meet two guys who were literally stranded. Their car had broken down. They'd been there for about a day. Mm -hmm. Didn't have enough money to get home. So, so where are you going? They're going somewhere past Denver. So anyhow, we took them, we picked up two hitchhikers, basically. Wow. You know? And how far did you bring them? And um, them to one of the guys, we were in a small SUV, one of the guys literally had to sit in the area that's normally considered the trunk. Because I was tired, I, I gotta get some sleep. So I'm taking up the whole back seat. <laughs> so one of the guys gets in the front seat while Steve was driving. And the other guy was sort of short. He said, well, I'll get the best. So he's literally in the trunk <laughs> with his SUV. Oh, wow. But when we get to Amber, they really didn't have enough money for a bus ticket to get the rest of the way. So yeah, we, we went on and paid for it. And that was kind of, you know, I, I kind of felt good afterwards. We were able to help somebody that was literally stranded out there on the road. I'll probably never see those guys again, but hopefully, you know, yeah. I helped them out, you know? Hopefully we made a difference. Yeah. You know? And perhaps they turned around and did some kind of <clears throat> somebody else. All right, so what time is it? It is time to continue. Mm -hmm. is good. Get, get to know. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll get one. Before, get yeah, before he gets to them, because they're going to be gone. <laughs> They'll be gone tonight. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I forgot how much I used to eat as a teenager. Mm. My dad said when I went to college, and there were four people in the family. When I left, he said the food bill went down 50%. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are now continuing.
Um, did anybody have anything else to discuss on, on, on paragraph 12? Are we done there? Okay. All right. Everybody else good with going on to 13? Okay. All right. Here we go. Um, anybody want to read paragraph 13? Because, uh, you know. I'll go. Well, okay. All right. Okay. God in his devotion to you created you devoted to everything and gave you what you are devoted to. Otherwise, you would not have been created perfect. Reality is everything and you have everything because you are real. You cannot make the unreal because the absence of reality is fearful and fear cannot be created. As long as you believe that fear is possible, you will not create. Opposing orders of reality make reality meaningless and reality is meaning. Okay, all right. Would like to, uh, would like to give their uh, interpretation of that. You just finished reading, Debbie. What you think about that? Thank you. You got anything to say about that, Debbie? Hang on, let me read it again. No. Take your time. We, okay. We're doing good on time here. You cannot make the unreal. You cannot make the unreal because you are real. Mm -hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. You are real. Opposing orders of reality make reality, reality meaningless and reality is meaning. Mm -hmm. We are all we are all from the one source. Which is real. Mm -hmm. What is real cannot be threatened. Okay. You just can't make what is unreal. Because that's how you create fear. I mean, you can, but you probably, you'll only create fear. Yeah. We certainly, we certainly can try. You're mm -hmm. right. <laughs> we certainly can try. We're, we're, right. Diligent. we're diligent with our attempts, but you're right. Yeah. Mm hmm Reality is everything. Well, I like that. Sound like well, you want you can. Go ahead, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thought you muted me again. <laughs> Sorry. You had dogs, man. <laughs> you had dogs, you know? <laughs> so you to get the, that first sentence in that paragraph, I think makes the rest of it um, uh, I, I wouldn't want to say make better sense, but a better understanding. God in his devotion to you traded you devoted to everything and gave you what you are devoted to. So if you know what he gave you that you're devoted to, then all of the rest makes sense. All right. Or it's better understood. So educate us. <laughs> God in his wisdom to you created you devoted to everything and gave you what you are devoted to, which is him. There you go. All right. God gave us everything because we are everything. You know, we are and everything. We, and we realize that when we're totally devoted to him because like like Deb said, 
is the one source. Mm -hmm. I believe that was Debbie said that, yeah. 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 We are everything. And yes, and we are completely devoted to God. And, you know, and I know it says in here, and I'm just basically saying this uh, for Pam, um, who has indicated she's looking. I know it's kind of saying him and he and stuff like that, but God oh, doesn't. Yeah. yeah, God doesn't, you know. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. It's, it's, if, if you want to say her, that, that's, that's yeah, fine too. Yeah. That's fine too. Like they say brother all the time, not sister. I, I get that. That's right. just how the book is written. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. But you know, God, God is is within you. And I know sometimes, you know, that, that could be a little bit difficult for some people to actually to actually um, accept that God is not outside of you, that God is actually within you. And if there is you know, God actually represents the part of you that exists in oneness, that exists in truth, that exists in that. So it's almost like you're in, in two different realms, you know? It's like part of your mind is in the realm of truth, and then another part of your mind is, like Ed likes to say, in the insanity, okay? So, and you have this constant ability to choose because you you know, because you can still, you know, focus your awareness of your mind wherever you want, okay? It's up to you where you want to focus, but a part of your mind exists in absolute truth and is no different from, is the same as God. And I know people, you know, some people, don't, they have a charge about saying that there's a part of me that is God. You know, so I'll just say part of your mind and God's mind are one, okay? But then you have another part of your mind that like Ed likes to talk about the world of insanity that exists in the world of insanity. But you can direct where you want your awareness, where you wanna place your attention and your attention and your intention on. So you can place your intention and attention on truth or it's completely within your free will to do the same thing in illusion. So the illusion is a result of you dealing with things where it really wasn't a creation, nothing was created. And there was fear involved. And you were setting yourself separate, apart from God. It's just losing just what's not real. Um, some of the, I, I, can, I can say, I can, you know, just for teaching. Um, illusion comes from outside searching. Okay? In general. I'm being very, I'm generalizing here, okay? I'm being very general, so, for, so forgive me. But outside searching leads to illusion. Searching for happiness on the outside, searching for peace, searching for love, searching for love. Okay? There's a lot of people that are searching for love in this age, you know, outside of them. Okay? They first perceive some sort of lack. Okay? And so many believe that that there is something outside that will help them or make them happy or maybe complete them or whatever you know doesn't matter illusion is still an illusion you don't have to evaluate the illusion whatever form of the illusion is doesn't even matter it's illusion okay when god gave you everything already in Side within you. That doesn't mean you know you can't seek companionship, but seek God first, and everything else follows. You will automatically attract, you know, that which is good for you when you seek spirit first and foremost. 
and focus your attention and awareness within. And then everything outside of you will reflect the divinity that is already, that you've placed your awareness on within you. Is that making any sense? And I know that this world teaches us or taught us up until at some point, I guess some of us kind of got into the realization that we want to begin looking within, but it taught us to look outside. You know, when we were, it taught us to look outside unless you had some, you know, some parents that are you know, maybe used to meditate or something or whatever. Maybe they, you know, maybe they were spiritualists or whatever. Generally, we were taught to look outside. You know, so it's like we, we so we, we, we begin looking outside and we begin to build up a construct of ourselves from outside stimuli. Okay, so it's based on what other people think of us and how other people react to us and all the, and so we slowly begin to build up these mental constructs of ourselves. The problem with that is since everything on the outside changes, so will the way people react to you. And if you're, the construct of yourself is based on the external, which always changes, you won't have any consistency. You won't have anything that you, any, any deep rooted truth that you can depend on. When the world starts changing and you got tornadoes and all kinds of other things, I don't mean literal tornadoes, Debbie. I'm, I mean like tornadoes that we have, that we experience in our lives when we feel like we're in a storm. If you haven't built up connection within yourself, built up a deep, really rooted construct of yourself that can be an anchor, that can anchor you in such a storm, it gets tough. But still, that path still leads to God, too, because eventually you'll get tired of being tossed about by the waves and the wind and everything and stuff like that. You'll say, enough. There's got to be a better way. And when you actually cry, there's got to be a better way, or in some way you're like, there's got to be a better way, that is when Holy Spirit does this thing. Because you're willing. You're willing. So it's okay if you want to go through the, the colorful way and being tossed about and shipwrecked and all that other stuff. And that's okay too. It's, you know, it, it can be scary. But it still leads to God anyway. And that you slowly feel that you're okay no matter what. That's the kind of goal. Exactly. Exactly. You know, that's kind of what you keep on feeling anytime. You know, no matter what, you're okay. No matter what, you're okay. And that is truth. No, you are, that is truth. That is a truth. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of what I'm trying to live by. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to live by. Right. Everyone is welcome. Yes. You know? yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, uh, Debbie, Ed, does anybody, uh, is Krista still here? I think she might be gone, but does anybody else have anything that they want to touch on on paragraph 13? I think you said everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was just waiting on you, Ed. That's all. I mean, you know, but you got dogs back there and stuff like that. So I had to go ahead and take the lead. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Ed, uh, you want to go ahead and read uh, paragraph 14? All right. Remember then that God's will is already possible and nothing else will ever be. This is the simple acceptance of reality because only that is real. You cannot distort reality and know what it is. 
And if you do distort reality, you will experience anxiety, depression, and ultimately panic because you are trying to make yourself unreal. When you feel these things, do not try to look beyond yourself for truth, for truth can only be within you. Say, therefore, Christ is in me, and where he is, Christ is in me, and where he is God must be, for Christ is part of him. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Anybody want to talk about that? Just that that reorientation when you find yourself at odds, you're unhappy, you're panicked, you're in a frenzy, that reorientation like Christ is in me and where he is, God must be as part of him. It's like an anchor back or maybe an anchor with a rope and you can follow it right back to where you need to be in true reality. And it's another way of saying, this little prayer here is another way of saying, I need another way of seeing this. Mm -hmm. This is leading me to be uh, unhappy, so it must not be reality, it must not be God's will. Let me please have another way of seeing this. Mm -hmm. So in both ways, you're, you're demonstrating your, your willingness and the realignment back to God's will is, is what we are all striving to do. Absolutely. Yeah. Pam? I completely agree <laughs> with, with that. Yeah, it happens. Yeah, they say, they say, um, you know that you're with spirit when you're at peace and yes. when you have anxiety or fear or whatever, then it's your own ego or thoughts. So mm-hmm. it's just to kind of anchor you, remind yourself that you're not. So that's just a whole word of you know? I love that. Mm-hmm. I, I concur. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Ed, you got anything you want to say? Well, this line, if you do distort reality, you will experience anxiety, depression, and ultimately panic because you're trying to make yourself unreal. And... The attempt to do so is your attempt to make whatever the experience is real. If what you're experiencing that brings on these things is real for you, then you respond to them like you are real mm-hmm. well but that's only making yourself unreal because the experience you're dealing with is an illusion which is not real so how can you deal with something that's not real and be real if you make it real to you I agree. We do it. We, we do it all the time. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. We do it all the time. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We sure do. <laughs> yeah. So how how can you tell when the reality is distorted? Can you tell if you're distorting it or you're caught up in somebody else's illusion? Well, there is there is nobody else. 
There is, there is, there is nobody else. I mean, no one can can dictate how you see things. You know, um, people can do things, but it's still a choice as far as how you how you choose to interpret it, or how you choose to draw meaning from it. Um, if you are rational and level-headed at all times. Right. But that's not the case. No, I'm just saying it's, it's still a choice. It's still a choice. It's still mm-hmm. a choice if you are aware that that choice is available. Mm-hmm. If you're aware that that choice is available, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely correct. Sometimes you can be in you can be in that illusion where you can't see things clearly because of all the trees that are around you. You and, and you just there. And then there's other times where, again, we're habitual creatures. We are habitual creatures, and this is a gradual process. It's not an overnight thing. It's not that you know reading the Course in Miracles, you know, in one sitting is going to all of a sudden change, you know, everything just like just like that. You know, it's just a gradual process as, again, as we create new wiring in our brain to support productive, to to support productive thinking, then you still have some of those old wires at the bottom line. They haven't completely dissolved. So the bottom line is you still got a choice, you know, and you can still choose to go, you can still go into the illusion. Maybe it's not a conscious choice, but you catch it more, Ed. You begin to catch it more. And as you begin to catch it more, you'll begin to catch it even more. And as you begin to catch it even more, you'll catch it even more. I mean, and eventually you begin to create new, new habits and, 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 and new patterns. But you're right, Ed. You know, sometimes you can be in the illusion and not even know. Well, what's even worse, you could be in somebody else's illusion and not even know it. Well, you know, if, if, if you believe in, the, in, in, in their illusion or if, you know, this, this, uh, describe or educate me on how you can be in someone else's illusion. On, on, uh, you know, help, help me understand what you're saying. Certainly. There was a six-year-old, ADHD. Okay. Drove his mother crazy. And she didn't see another way. She got caught up in the illusion of thinking that because she can't handle him, she's a bad mother. She couldn't tell the difference between being caught up in his illusion and hers. And it was only when when um, a, a, a system, a reward system was set up to manage the behavior, and she discovered after three months, he didn't change very much, but he did. I mean, he didn't change very much, but she did. That was the realization that she was caught up in the illusion. That wasn't hers. She wasn't aware that there was another choice until it was shown to her. How do you know whose illusion it is? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to ask the same thing. I was going to ask hers or his. Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, the bottom line is she still perceived it. And how do you know that, you know, um, that it wasn't her, that it was his illusion? And not hers. And not hers. It was hers. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, it was hers. She, well, okay. I, I hear what you're saying now. Okay. Yeah. Because, because he was able to easily manipulate her. He would get out of control, and she would give him what he wanted. Okay. Even though, even though she knew that she shouldn't, so on top of everything else, she was racked, racked with guilt. Okay, you know, from one pers- from one way, you know, from one perspective, you know, you can say that the person was able to manipulate somebody, but you know, ch- children are going to be are going to manipulate if you let them if you let them manipulate you, manipulate. I mean, I have I have sons, and they've attempted to be manipulative. 
Um, and But they could only manipulate as long as I allowed them to manipulate. So it's still my illusion, you know, because I still have to allow the manipulation, you know? And so if she allowed it, you know, then she allowed it. I mean, it, I still fail to see how this is this child's illusion. Well, he got what he wanted. That's, that's, that's the nature of a child, though. I mean, you know, I wanted to get what I well, wanted. Well, that's an example. I'm sure that everybody has experienced being caught up in someone else's illusions where they were doing things that they regretted later. Hmm. Well, maybe we'll, maybe we'll take this conversation, you and I take this conversation offline. Um, you know, and so we can talk a little bit ourselves. Um, so we actually have some more time, um, but to be honest with you, you know, we don't have to go into another, into a whole nother, uh, chapter, you know? So how do you guys feel about it? We actually have more time. What do you want to do? I'm putting it to a vote. I, I can stay for another, until nine. Okay. And my brain is gonna like, just turn off automatically, I'm sorry. Uh, we've had a, <laughs> now we're going on to the answer to prayer. It might be a little good thing for us to go on ahead and, All right. and read one yeah. of the two more prayers. Let's, right. let's do it. So let's go to the next one, which is, Chapter nine, part two, the answer to prayer. And who would like to, uh, to start in, in paragraph one? You know, okay. Everyone who ever tried to use prayer to ask for something has experienced what appears to be failure. This is not only true in connection with specific things that might be harmful, but also in connection with requests that are strictly in line with this course. The latter in particular might be incorrectly interpreted as proof that the course does not mean what it says. You must remember, however, that the course states and repeatedly that its purpose is the escape from fear. Okay. Well, I noticed. First, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dave. I was just going to say that first sentence is problematic for me. Okay. Because I know people that ask, pray, and ask for things, and they don't feel like it's a failure. Mm -hmm. They pray for things and. They say, I got what I prayed for. So I'm trying to figure out where this is going. Well, one of the things that I, that I love about Course in Miracles is they definitely throw little words in there. Like on this sentence, it, it, the, the key word there is appears. That's the key word. Doesn't mean that it that 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 it was, but it it appears. So I think that right there, Debbie, is the is is the key. I, you know, by personal belief, I, you know, a prayer works. I know it works for me from a, a personal uh, uh, testimony, but it's saying everyone who has ever tried to use prayer to ask for something has experienced what appears to be failure. Okay, I just got I just got clarity. Yeah. I just got it. There's it's right there. Everyone who has ever tried to use prayer to ask for something. Why are you asking for something if you're ready yet? Right, that's true. That's true. Okay, never mind. Ignore me. Um so we're talking about this paragraph. Anybody want to talk about anything else? In this paragraph? It says the course stated repeatedly that the purpose of the course is escape from fear. 
and uh, <clears throat> it seems that it is trying to take away, help us to take away one of the bis biggest obstacles to our learning who we really are and being able to uh, create or extend love. But if there's fear, we, we can't do that. So that's what they're saying the whole purpose of this book is for. Mm -hmm. Answer to prayer. Okay. Should we go on to the second paragraph? I mean, sure. If we if we're done talking about the first, you know, we're going to talk about the first. Ed, do you have any comments about that first one? Well. <clears throat> We already know that that if just from what we have read before, that um, if you want something, uh, let, me, let me go back to it. If you were devoting your mind to what you do, uh, but consider the result of the strange decisions, you are devoting your mind to what you do not want. How real can this devotion be if you do not want it? But the illusion is, is that it makes us believe this is something that we want. So if we're wanting an illusion and we ask for it through prayer, we are not going to get it. At least not in that form that we, we are asking for. It may be something different that's in line to the degree of truth of what we're asking for. Yeah. All right. When we ask for something that is not real, that as is an illusion, through our prayer and we continually get no answer, then perhaps that's a motivator to get us to start thinking about, well, am I asking for something that's not real? Do I need to change my question? Do I need to change my approach, my content? Um, do I need start to start asking for something that is real as opposed to something that is not. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do I need to change? Or, yes, there. Yeah. Thank you. Or if what, yeah. Go ahead, Ed, I'm sorry. Yeah, or if what's being asked for is motivated by fear. Oh, mm -hmm. another, yes. Yeah, like a lack, a lack. Yeah, exactly. I mean, a lack. Uh, you know. Yeah, because you, yeah, you've mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Perceiving lack, that's, 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 that's fear based. That's something that you, you feel that you don't have. You're perceiving that you're missing something. So, yeah, you're right. That's, that's fear based. Absolutely. Yep. So that's why when people ask, pray for a million dollars, they don't get it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So really, you know, really briefly, coming from your right mind, okay? is asking the Holy Spirit to change your perceptions. You know? It's we don't know. That's what right. The bottom line is we don't know. So asking the Holy Spirit to change your perception so that you can see things differently, so that you can see things truly, so that you can see things as Holy Spirit sees things. These are all examples of coming from the right mind through prayer. Okay? Right. Or, you know, you know and, 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 or, you know, through affirming, you know, through affirming, affirming what, what, what is the truth, what is, you know, what is absolutely the truth, you know, that you are, you know, that you are whole, affirming your wholeness and things like that. These are 
coming from your right mind examples of prayer. Okay? So, yes. Second, something wrong with this. We do it. Um, you know, Holy Spirit, I'm not understanding what's going on. I, I don't know what's happening, but help me to see things different. That's coming from your right mind. That's offering the willingness. Even if, even though you may be perceived, even though you're in the illusion, you're offering the willingness to see things differently. Yeah. You know? Yes. So. Step forward. Right. Exactly. So. All right. So would we like to go on to paragraph two? We have a little time. I'll read it. Okay. A little loud. Let us suppose then that what you ask of the Holy Spirit is what you really want, but you are still afraid of it. Should this be the case, your attainment of it would no longer be what you want. That is why certain specific forms of healing are not achieved even when the state of healing is. An individual may ask for physical healing because he is fearful of bodily harm. At the same time, if he were healed physically, the threat to his thought system might be considerably more fearful to him than its physical expression. In this case, he is not only asking for release from fear, but for the removal of a symptom that he himself selected. The request is therefore not for healing at all. Now, you know, in um, metaphysics, this is known as chemicalization. So that's probably a word that you've come across, Debbie, since you're in metaphysics four. Yeah, in metaphysics, this is known as chemicalization. So um, they also talk about it in the 12 powers and the 12 power class as well. Um, when you are having difficulty manifesting because there is something that is working, that is within you that's working against what you're trying to bring, and it's called chemicalization. But it's a metaphysical term for basically, which kind of is, is synonymous with what this paragraph is talking about. Yeah. Does anybody uh, have anything else that jumps out at them? This is, this, this is our last paragraph that we're discussing. So, anybody? Well, I guess I have a question to what you guys think line number five means. Um, at the same time, if he were healed physically, the, the, this the threat to his thought system might be considerably more fearful to him than its physical expression. Well, I'm not sure exactly what that means. You know, when you're in illusion, um, there are a number of factors that could be in that illusion. Um, there are some people that um, that actually find actually find comfort. I'm just giving examples. I'm not saying that this is per se right here, because again, so this is only kind of giving examples as well. There are some people that find comfort in um, being sick. Maybe being maybe being sick uh, gives them more sympathy from uh, uh, family members and things like that. So they sense what, what you get. Right, they, send, they, they, they get a certain support system that's almost similar to quote unquote yeah. love because, you know, people, you know, maybe, you know, feel something for them because of their state and they, you know, they get something from that. They get an emotional thing fulfilled by that and healing that would, get, would disrupt their idea of love, which still is like chemicalization because there's something within you that is going against this request that you're making 
or healing. There's something within you that actually wants the sickness for another reason. Not that you really want to be sick, but this, you're getting something emotionally or something is being fulfilled by the sickness. So when you say, yeah, I'd like you to heal me, but there's a part of you that really doesn't want to be healed, and yeah, that's chemicalization. I get it now, but I had to, you know, sometimes you have to read people a couple times. Yes, yes. You know, and yeah. it doesn't offer you five sentences saying the very same thing. Right. You take right. your choice. Right. It's just right. one. Right. <laughs> yeah, right. But that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's just one instance. I mean, it could be a yeah. myriad, but I'm just giving you one scenario. Yeah. All right. So, does anybody else have anything they want to talk? They want to talk about on that one? Well, you know, what they're actually what it comes right down to. Mm -hmm. that also, in the course, is that all illness is mental illness. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So, um, and we get ill because of the. Our, our the ego thought system, and we have, and we believe not only believe in illness, but we have faith in it. Um, and and well, I'll, I'll give you a good example. When <laughs> when I was in graduate school, when we were studying abnormal psychology. Can you imagine how many people came down with symptoms? Really? They looked at the book and said, oh, my God, that's me. Wow. Okay. And, and um, once you put, and it's a part of our consciousness mm -hmm. uh, to believe that in illness. I mean, every year we come up with more new illnesses. Mm -hmm. New cures, but more illnesses. Right. Uh, and that's because we're in a illness um, uh, thought system. It's, it's part of the fear makeup. So, they really really comes down to the strength of your belief and the strength of your faith and where you place your faith. Absolutely. All right. So this concludes Course in Miracles. I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and finish out in prayer. All right. We're just grateful for spirit, for this illumination, the illuminating evening, and especially the force of miracles. We're grateful, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for the energy that you truly felt in this place. And we feel this gratitude for the abundant blessings of spirits in the name and in the nature of the indwelling I am in Christ. And so it is. Amen. All right. Well, I'm glad you were able to join us tonight. Yes, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah thank you. I'm right. say, yeah, thank you. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. You guys have a good evening. You Bye. too. See Thanks. you tomorrow. All right, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. All right. Yes, yes, I, I have so many. And my horse. Right on this special page, that's for sure. Like,